we want mentorship and mentorship without physical proximity is very empty. And mm. that's why we love even at Relay is that people work within eyesight, the teams, even if they're doing different functions or within eyesight of each other. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Shahid Durrani. Today we have with us Andrew Siegel. Andrew is the founder of Boxer Property, 15 million square feet in commercial real estate, and co-founder of Relay Human Cloud, a staff hosting company operating in India, Honduras, and Mexico. Welcome to our show, Andrew. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. It's very dynamic companies that you have there. <clears throat> Is there any relation to the two? How did you get into the staffing when you were in real estate or was it the other way around? No. So I started in real estate 31 years ago. I can't even believe it. When I say that long, it makes me feel like I'm older than 40, which <laughs> I am obviously. <laughs> and as I was building my company, it, it, it was just very frustrating looking for good people, training those people. And I felt like I was running a school for oil companies. So we were based in Houston. And when we would get people up to speed on accounting and data management and things, someone would just come and, and, and grab them. Luckily, when I was growing up, my parents had traveled with us uh, extensively. And one of the places we went to many times was India. So I went to India we went, we visited some other people who had employees there, rented an office, s formed a company, and um, filled it with people who were supporting what we were doing in the U.S. And that was about 15 years ago. Wow. It's incredible. You actually have the network outside of India that helps with that business. Yes. Yeah. So what, what happened mm -hmm. was we, so we started in in India 15 years ago, and friends, people we did business with, tenants, all sorts of different customers would come to us and say, hey, I just need two people. Can you just give me two people? I'll send you a check. And this turned into a lot of people. And all of a sudden, like we were administering people and we were helping other people set up companies. We'd expanded to Honduras and to Mexico City. Um, and, and we realized about two years ago is we have to make this a business. This is too much administration. So we separated it from Boxer, from our, our real estate company. We called it Relay Human Cloud because we thought, hey, this is like a relay race where you hand the baton of work around the world through time and through space. And all of a sudden, when it became available to really anyone, we got a lot of a lot of interest, a lot of adoption into it, and now I think we're getting close to eighty customers, eighty companies that are are using our people in our offices around the world. And it ranges from financial to every type of department, correct? Yeah, it starts. So finance is like an easy entrance. As you add a couple of yeah. accounting people, we started training people in specific softwares. There's a, there's a software that people in the real estate industry use called Yardi. There's a software that people in news media use called Stringer. So we started training people in these, in these softwares and you can grow once you get used to having people around the world. And COVID actually helped because COVID solve the mystery of, is it possible for someone to work outside of the office? So once people understood that, they could go into different things. And then all of a sudden we had leasing agents, we had assistant managers, we had paralegals, we had architects, we had database administrators. I mean, it really, it really can expand. And having been in it for 15 years, now our, our real estate company has 300 people around the world who support our domestic real estate. Hey, can you speak a little bit about Boxer Real Estate? What does it incorporate? So Boxer, Boxer Property, our property division, 
has several yeah. things, the largest of which is office space. So we lease offices to primarily small tenants. Perfect. Um, they that. Very much online. <laughs> you know, it moves fast. And we did something mm. interesting in Relay allowed us to do something really interesting in office leasing is we went to 24 hours a day, seven days a week leasing. It's really a revolution that you can lease an office space on a Sunday, on a Saturday night, on a Friday morning before work starts. The leasing office just never closes at Boxer. And we found when we would talk to people, they would say, oh, nobody ever leases on the weekends. Why would you do that? But before Amazon, someone may have said no one ever buys a washer dryer on the weekends either or orders a TV. They, they don't do that in the middle of the night. And now we think of that as normal. So it's very, it was very exciting that it started off as, hey, I need people and I want to operate economically. And then it turned into this tool that allowed us to do things that we otherwise couldn't have done. You're actually purchasing these office buildings as well? Or? Y yeah. So we buy office buildings okay. and we also run them sometimes for other people, but most of them we own. Then we, we buy hotels and resorts. We have a, a, a golf resort called the Tapatio Cliffs in, in Phoenix now. We do malls. Our, our current mall is a 1.2 million square foot kind of Latino experience in Fort Worth. And then a lot of other kind of peripheral real estate things. But office is our biggest model, and that's what the most people uh, support. We have 8,000 8, tenants, 8,000 companies lease space from us in our offices. Wow. Did you notice an incline after COVID when it comes to office space? Yeah. So COVID, COVID was very cruel to the office world for a while yeah. because everybody thought, hey, we could just work remote. And what they didn't realize was it's like a melting ice cube. Because if I take a team that's been together for 10 years and I send them all home, the first day it's fine. And then the next day it's okay. And then you, someone leaves, you add a new person, that person doesn't really integrate. So what we learned from going through COVID and what we think the market has now begun to understand is you don't need to all be in exactly the same place but you need a team, you need a cohort, you need a tribe, you need a group who you work with and share ideas with and interact with. And if you don't, if you don't have that, you don't build a team and a dedication and innovation. And the biggest thing, and we know this if someone's working in our office in India or if they're working in our headquarters in Houston, is that everybody in our company has two jobs. The first job is their job. That one's easy. The second job is help people integrate into the company. And I don't care whether it's a security guard who's showing someone the ropes or a maintenance person who's explaining how we do things, or it's the, the CFO is showing the treasurer, you know, what to do. So we want mentorship and mentorship without physical proximity is very empty. And mm. that's why we love even, even at Relay is that people work within eyesight, the teams, even if they're doing different functions are within eyesight of each other. We want people, even if, if someone has eight employees in India, we want them in the same room. We want them to be together. We want them to feel like they're part of something. And then we spend a lot of time at Relay, the, making sure that there's an amazing culture. We had a very funny story once is we have a cricket team in India. And in India, cricket is, if you took baseball and football and basketball and put them all together, that's cricket to them. And somebody left the, 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 the company and I got an email because they they've got my email address and we interact and people give me suggestions. And he said, Mr. Siegel, I want you to know that I think that your company is hiring people who are good at cricket. And that's why the team wins so much. And I said, yes, we know that. So the University of Texas brings in quarterbacks. So does Harvard. This is okay because the cricket is part of our culture and we're excited about it. So it was funny. He, he thought he was blowing the whistle on the thing that I said, I, I want our cricket team to crush all the other companies. <laughs> and it does. Yeah. It does, huh? It does, yes. 
Now in oh, Honduras, we have other things, but oh. cricket, cricket is very important in India. Mm. Can you share some challenges running companies in different countries? Oh, there are. There's cultural things. When you think about even the difference between Texas and California, the way that you refer to people, mm. the holidays, there's, there, there are religious issues. India is very sensitive to maps. You've got to be very careful about having a map on your website because if the borders in Kashmir are in the wrong place, it's, mm. it's heresy. So every once in a while, somebody will post something that culturally is very acceptable there that we go, hey, we're not going to do a aren't girls cute day on National Girl Day in, in India. That's not what we want on our international website. So what, what I feel, and I, I feel very strongly about this, is that there's a international language of business that we have to all that we have to all observe. So it's almost like air traffic control. When you fly a, a plane from Peru to Beijing, you're using exactly the same commands, exactly the same alphabet, exactly the same references. And that's how we can move planes around the world. So the question now is how do we move business around the world? How do we interact with people? And there's some fun cultural things. One, one, one of our other funny things is we had to get the people in India to stop calling their supervisor, sir. If you work for, oh, yeah. if you work for Apple computer and Tim Cook walks in, you're like, Hey, Tim, you're not going to probably no one's called him Mr. Cook for 30 years. Yeah. And that's how people interact. So there are things that are like air traffic control that we've been, we've been dealing with. And it's fun because you have to rethink of things and say, okay, how do I celebrate someone else's culture, but at the same time, become a global workforce. Because mm. you have to be sensitive, even on your websites for each country, like you mentioned, you have to make sure the information that you're sharing is pertaining to that country and not saying anything otherwise. Yes. And, and, and also yeah. just make sure that we're observing. Sometimes it's the law. Sometimes it has to do with religion. There, there yeah. are things that you may do in India that you would never dream of doing in the U.S., but it's fun. And, and the exciting thing I find is that <laughs> as we've expanded globally, the global team is totally integrated. So this is a big difference. It used to be that you'd have an office in India and it was like a back, they'd call it a back office or outsourcing. And those people would never really interact with their counterparts in the West. And now I have 300 people talking to 300 people and really, really exciting. They're interacting directly with customers or interacting with people throughout the organization as if they were here. Mm. And we learn, you also can learn a lot from each other. It's like having a pen pal is like, yeah. when you're talking to someone every day, you're like, Hey, have your parents arranged your marriage yet? Questions that we yeah, don't there's ask. There's so much the you can learn. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much you can learn from other cultures. It makes you more compassionate as well. I, I, I think that the, the diversity, this is diversity in action and it's not forced, it's organic. And it's really cool to have a company that is like where everybody in our, everybody in our U S operations are interacting with people around the world where normally they wouldn't. Mm. Can you share some stats compared to remote workers and in the office? What are we looking at now? Pre-COVID was more in office. And then obviously during COVID, it was more remote. But how does it look now? And what do you think is going to be like in the, in the future? I, I think we're going to see a, a return to the office. Like I love that Boxer, mm. when we're competing with people who are working remote, and they're not in their office Friday and they're not in their office Monday and they're, they're just not available. It's, it's been wonderful to compete with people who aren't showing up. And I think we're going to, we're going to see people understand the value of each other, the value of being around each other. And this, there's a lost generation out there that hasn't integrated. And at Relay, we can really do this as we spent several months before they 
go on assignment for, for one of our customers is they spent several months integrating into our company. And it's like boot camp where you learn, you learn how we do things. And, and the culture of that is, is irreplaceable as opposed to just hiring mm. someone, having them show up their first day of work and try and figure out what's, what, what's going on. The teams are amazing. And, and it, mm. again, it, it started with, Hey, let's save money. And the truth is when you use a global workforce, you can cut about 70% um, off of your cost when you look at the domestic cost of housing someone and benefits and all of that, but it grows into something much, much more profound. I found when you got into real estate, what were you doing before that? And then what exactly happened that got you interested in real estate? So I, I grew up in a, in a family where my father was in real estate. So from age, I think he bought his first property when I was one. So I started very early, but I was never really involved in it. And I went to, uh, I, w I went to college, I went to law school and right after law school, I just got to Texas as quickly as I could and really thought that there was a, there, there was an opportunity to reach out to small tenants that an office building could look a bit like an apartment where people, there were spaces that were pre-made and people just moved into spaces um, that fit. It's something I had observed my father doing when I was growing up. And it, it turned out to be just at the right time is there was technology was making it possible to operate in smaller groups. Used to be you needed a receptionist, you needed a file clerk, you needed a type typing pool, you, you had all sorts of infrastructure that you needed and sometimes libraries and records and things like that. Mm. If you think about like a law firm, like you couldn't, it was very hard to just be a single lawyer or two lawyers. And then all of a sudden the answering machine, the fax machine, the computer, these things really changed the landscape and it enabled people to work in much smaller groups. And we were there starting in 1992, we were there for the people. And now we're seeing a similar opportunity set is that we can move work through time and space. And that's even more exciting than the, the progression to small offices. Can you share what you feel your innermost superpower is that got you to this point in life? Oh my God, it's organization. I actually own the domain name for that. So my feeling is that that a dedication to data has to start way before you're going to use the data is you have to start thinking in terms of organizing. And I was, I was really lucky to have a, a brother who started the business with me, Justin, who was really good at actually putting this into practice. So we are hyper organized. We're so obsessed with organization. It almost doesn't matter what we're doing. We're more interested in the fact of the process and data management and artificial intelligence. And I think that's what's allowed me to yeah. diversify. That's allowed me to survive. That's allowed us to thrive in a very challenging office market organization. That's wonderful. So what do you think AI is going to do in your world? Sorry to say, but a lot of these jobs are going to be taken over by AI. What are your thoughts on that? I, th I think we, throughout history, we've thought about that and we've been wrong every time. We thought the steam shovel was going to take all the ditch diggers <laughs> out. And then... This one's a big one, though. Remember right? the computer? The computer was yeah. going to do in the 90s. The computer was going to do everything. Yeah. And we, I ended up yeah. with 40 people in my IT department. <laughs> like I, I actually yeah. ended yeah. up with more people. So I, I think AI is very exciting in very Same interesting here. applications but so for example we have something on our we have a software company called brava that that tracks everything that we do there's a button on the program that will summarize a situation for you which just saves you the time but the problem the the problems with ai is it's confused in other words we, we we're telling and, and really we're not Effectively, now when we say AI, we should be saying generative AI because that's what we're talking about is something that can make something new. 
is on mm. one hand, we want it to be original. And on the other hand, we want it to be real. So if I say, write a legal brief, it's going to write a beautiful legal brief, but it will also, and it will be original. It won't just copy a legal brief, but it will also make up the cases. And you're like, no, mm. don't make up cases. I said, be original over here, but not over there. I, mm. I, I think the most interesting thing is that it will get to the answer instead of the source. And this is a sea change in the way that we access information is that we used to go on Google and say, what are the, the best bagel shops in Houston? And it would find someone who published a list of the top 10 bagel shops in Houston, and it would show you that list. Now it's just answering the question. Yeah. I see it, for example, an idea came to my mind a few weeks ago, but probably someone's working on it. Yeah, but they will so when they hear this. You know, it's, it's, yeah, I'll love that. I'll love that. I'll love to be part of that initiative where I can inspire someone to do something. It's about accounting, for example, like accounting. If there's an artificial intelligence system that you just inject into any business that does everything, even a POS system can be connected to it where you don't need anybody. It just does it all. That would replace specific departments, wouldn't you think? So I, I don't really see it as replacing. I see it as augmenting. It's a tool. So it's a very valuable tool, but it has to be used very carefully yeah. because it still, it still has true AI where it's not just an algorithm where you've defined things it can be very mm. problematic. It can be, it hallucinates. At this stage, yeah. Who knows where yeah. it's going? Yeah. Good point. Maybe well, it does. Andrew, you just ask yeah. it where it's going. It'll tell you. Yeah. No drama. <laughs> Have a conversation. Don't be shy. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, it was great having you on the show, my friend. Um, looking forward to working with you and, and your company and grow together. And we thank you for agreeing to help us promote it as well. It looks like you're doing fantastic things and, and I wish you all the best. Did you actually make that up or are you reading something from AI? I just want to know right now. Oh, no, I just made it up. <laughs> no, I just made it up. Yeah, just made it up from my heart. So it's, it's great. I love seeing this stuff, right? I love hearing about these stories and what you have done and how many jobs you're creating all over the world is admirable. You're a great piece for the communities. Great to have you on the show and help you spread this message. And if there's any final thoughts, please go ahead. Organization, organization. Great. That's <laughs> Wonderful. It. Thank you, Andrew. Keep in touch. I'll follow your social media as well. If you have something that you wanted to get out, just let us know. We'll bring you back on. Yeah. Most of it is about my comedy career. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> yes, no one's no, laughing no. now. <laughs> All right, great. They will in the future. Get AI involved, in the future, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. Audience, thank you for joining us. Andrew's information will be in the show notes. Take a look. If you need someone for your team, get in touch.